Hey guys, so it looks like as of yesterday, October 18th, there's an update in the Chris Watts case. And this article is from People.com. Hiding daughters in oil will not destroy the DNA in Chris Watts' murder case. However, it will not be a smoking gun either. It goes on to say, DNA has been a key dispute in the pre-trial phase of Chris Watts' prosecution for the alleged murders of his wife and two young daughters. But an expert tells people that it is unlikely to prove his guilt or innocence on its own. Dr. Phil Danielson, a professor at the University of Denver's Department of Biological Sciences, who specialize in DNA collection and analysis, says that while it may hold a pop culture fueled importance in the minds of outside observers. The reality is much hazier in a homicide case like that of Shanann Watts and the children. Within hours of Chris Watts' arrest on August 15th, authorities announced that Shanann had been found in a shallow grave on an oil work site owned by Chris's former employer. Bella 4 and Celeste 3 were found the afternoon of August 16th, where they had been concealed for four days in nearby crude oil tanks. Since 33-year-old Chris was taken into custody, much of the legal maneuvering has centered around DNA. There have been requests for Chris to give up samples of his own, requests to have samples of it collected in a certain way from the necks of his daughters, and so on. Such wrangling has fueled a kind of intertwined speculation by case watchers based on police statements. One, that Chris must have hidden his kids' bodies in a particular manner to destroy the DNA on their bodies. And two, that any possible DNA analysis will prove an inflection point in the prosecution. In this view, the DNA on the bodies of Bella and Celeste will either corroborate or debunk the most startling part of the investigation. Chris alleged confession to police that he strangled Shanann, 34, after watching her strangle Celeste in apparent revenge when he told her he wanted to separate after nearly six years of marriage. According to this confession, as described in an arrest affidavit, he then loaded all three bodies into his truck and stashed them for several days before coming clean to investigators who had discovered he was allegedly having an affair with a co-worker. Danielson explains that DNA from Bella and Celeste will not be a decisive factor in confirming what really happened. He said it's going to be very difficult based on DNA alone to suggest whether or not Mr. Watts strangled his daughters, he said. What is certain, he says, is that being submerged in oil only makes DNA retrieval more difficult. But it does not destroy the DNA, as the two do not mix well. In fact, in the long term, being buried in the ground is more risky, as it exposes DNA to bacteria while oil is relatively sterile. Danielson says the temperature of the oil may be another factor, and it's unclear how hot the crude oil was that covered the Watts girls. But oil in and of itself is not going to guarantee that you're not going to get any DNA evidence. He says that any DNA involved in the case will be trace DNA, also known to the layer person touch DNA. It can be detected in even minuscule quantities and easily passed from one person to another in both direct ways via skin and skin contact or indirect such as via a surface someone else has touched or in between pieces of clothing two people wear when they are washed together, Danielson says. If Chris had been the ex-husband who lived in New England and never saw his daughters, and then he came out one time to Colorado, suddenly the children are dead and his DNA is on them, the DNA would be more dispositive or more useful in that kind of case. Still, many years after CSI and Law and & Order TV shows popularized the notion of clear and convincing forensic work, prosecutors know they need to incorporate DNA into their arguments, even if DNA is not damning by itself. It's certainly not going to be the smoking gun. Danielson says that while at a basic level, force and friction will leave more DNA behind, as when someone attacks someone else by hand, 
That wouldn't be the only possible explanation if a large sample of Chris's DNA was conspicuously found around his daughter's necks, or th if it was reversed, if a lot of Shanann's DNA should turn up in the same place on Bella and Celeste. One might argue that Watt's daughters could have touched a used tissue of their father's and then touched themselves. Danielson says, Trace DNA moves about so easily that could explain how evidence of him ended up on them. But DNA being viewed as a very powerful tool, as a very powerful tool by juries, both sides will have to address it, he says. What what their dueling experts are likely to differ on is not the science behind the DNA analysis, but the interpretation of any DNA that is found, meaning given the different possible explanations. The goal will be advancing an explanation that just that isn't just possible but probable. The prosecution sees it as necessary to try to use as another nail in the coffin, basically. But the DNA by itself is really not all that informative in these kinds of cases. Chris has not yet entered a plea to his charges, which w should include three counts of first-degree murder, and he's actually scheduled to return to court November 19th. His public defender is forbidden by office policy from commenting on the case. So that's all we've got. If we get any more updates, I will be sure, sure to let you guys know. You guys have a great weekend. Much love and God bless.